Let's start with the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, the most conservative and uh, dogmatic science is the history. What they've been telling us about the origin of the man, civilizations, and the pyramids is wrong. The 21st century is the time for the scientific paradigm to be changed. We hope that uh, there will be no more elite science and no more selection of the information. The information we're going to be finding out about the pyramids, the pyramid builders, and the age of the pyramids will be so huge that uh, it will not only shake the base of our science, but it's going to change it all together. <coughs> They've been telling us for too long that the pyramids were built on Egyptian soil by Egyptian pharaohs, served as a tomb. And for the Mesoamerican pyramids, they are saying they were used as a places to sacrifice the enemies. Now we know it is wrong. 20 years from now, they will be laughing at us what we were accepting as a scientific truth. The same way we are laughing at the people who lived at the time of the Galileo Galilei, 500 years ago. Only one civilization, the most recent, in Mexico, by using the pyramid as a ceremonial places to sacrifice the enemy, the Aztecs, 700 years ago. All of them before were using pyramids for something else. You take Encyclopedia Britannica and they will tell you that the pyramids and the pyramid temples are built only in Egypt and Mesoamerica. Now we know it is wrong. They were built on all six continents. Decades in front of us will be bringing so many discoveries of the pyramids, pyramid shaped and conical shape artificial structures from the ancient history. The notion that uh, the most colossal and the most known pyramid on the planet, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, or Kefren, or Hufus pyramid, which Egyptologists assigned to the pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. And it, is, it was used as a tomb. Does not, is not based on any scientific evidence. The mummy of the pharaoh Hufu has never been found. No hieroglyphic writings on the walls of the pyramid. No symbols whatsoever. No tools, no organic material that belonged to the fourth dynasty pharaohs. Four years ago, we had 20 Egyptian archaeologists, Egyptologists, and geologists here in Visoko. Some of them claimed, oh, there is nothing here, it's all natural. After we showed them so many proofs, they were still hesitant to claim that we have an artificial pyramidal complex here. On the other hand, when it comes to the pyramids in Egypt, they take that they were built by the pharaohs with no scientific arguments. And then they accuse us of the pseudo-archaeology or pseudo-history. In fact, if you don't base your archaeological monuments on scientific truths, that's what you do. That's the pseudoscience. If you ask any Egyptologist, did pharaohs of the fourth dynasty know about the number pi, 3.14, 4,500 years ago? They will tell you, of course not. That very important mathematical and geometrical value has been invented by the ancient Greek civilization. 2,000 years after. However, 
When you take the site at the base of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, 232 meters, and another one, 232, 464 meters dividing by the height of the pyramid, 147, the result is 3.14. It's very obvious. So this value has been in front of our eyes for thousands of years. Obviously, the builders of the Great Pyramid of Egypt knew about the number pi, which is the most important number in sacred geometry. The golden number, or golden ratio, 1.618, is also incorporated in this pyramid. The distance between our planet and the Sun is incorporated in this pyramid. The distance between our planet and the Moon as well. The number 299,000 also, which is the speed of light. You don't incorporate all this mathematical and geometrical knowledge in one monument which is supposed to be a tomb for one dead man. You build such a structure as a message for the future, but when it comes to the main purpose, you build it so it can serve living communities. Egyptologists proudly show us the tools they found around this site and in Egypt altogether. They display them in a beautiful museum in Cairo. What we can see there are copper tools. No matter how hardened the copper, you cannot shape the granite from Aswan. 900 kilometers south, and then transport those blocks. One of them, in the second biggest pyramid, Kefrens, is 220 tons. Plus, when you add in other tools, wooden sticks, they want to assure us that the Egyptians did have technology to build such a colossal structure. <coughs> Funny. The idea that the pyramids are built in Egypt, and most Egyptologists and historians still believe that, is wrong. The pyramids are built on all six continents. They are built in South, Central and North America, Europe, Africa, Asia and in Pacific region, in Australia. This is the biggest Mayan pyramid in northern Guatemala, in the city of El Mirador. We don't see it. It's completely covered by soil and vegetation. It's in the middle of the jungle. The Mayan has built 100,000 pyramids. 98% of them are still covered by soil and vegetation. So, when it comes to the pyramids, they don't have to be like the one on the Giza Plateau, in a desert, in a different climate belt. And you can see the stone blocks on top of each other. 100 meters, and it will be revealed to us, depending on the money, a few decades from now. You enter the beautiful city of Palenque, probably the most beautiful Mayan city in the central Mexican state of Chiapas. The first sight you see is the pyramid covered by trees and dirt. San Andres in El Salvador, dozens of pyramids completely covered by soil and grass. Comalcalco, Mexico, dozens of pyramids still covered by dirt. Belize, they used to have 1,000 Mayan cities, towns and villages. Every one of them would have several pyramids, most of them 
still in the jungle. Some of them just partially reconstructed. El Chuatan in El Salvador, one of their freestanding pyramids. Of course, they all look like natural hills. The same thing, this time the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. Completely covered in bushes, soil, forest. The Chinese pyramids. 1967, the Chinese archaeologists who were working on them found a lot of archaeological material and he did find tablets with carvings. He deciphered them partially and at the international conference in Japan he said that they do have pyramids in the central Chinese province of Shanxi, 250 of them. And the messages that he partially deciphered were telling him that they were built 12,500 years ago. You go to this province today, the access to the pyramid is free, at least to most of them. It was not until 15 years ago. In 1970s, late 1960s, beginning of 1980s, the Chinese government ordered the plants to be planted and the pyramids be hidden from the world. Today, they've been investigating the smaller ones, 230 of them. They do belong to the most recent Chinese emperor, from the Emperor Qin, 2,200 years ago. But 20 biggest one, they have not been touched. Talking to the Chinese archaeologists, they told me they don't have permission for them. Why? They are built from sandstone blocks and granite, much superior material than the, to the smaller ones, which are built by mud brick. So we do have two different civilizations. Pyramid builder, much more superior. And later civilizations, they tried to make replica unsuccessfully. Same thing in Egypt. The oldest pyramids, Cheops, Kefren, Mycerae, Josephs, Sneferus, they are all built by granite and the limestone. Later on, the 12th dynasty, 18th dynasty, by the mud brick, inferior material. Monte Alban, the town of pyramids, the second largest ceremonial center in Mexico. Some pyramids are still covered by layers of soil, waiting for a better time to be cleared and reconstructed. Cavachi area, southern Peru, 34 step stone pyramids. China, the biggest pyramid still covered in bushes and vegetation. And again, Palenque. This is a temple built by Lord Kim, the son of uh, Lord Pakal from the 7th century. However, above is the largest pyramid in Palenque, which has not been cleared yet. It seems that they are making replicas of that largest pyramid. The view of the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, 150 years ago. Today, that's the best known pyramid in Mesoamerica, colossal structure. The reason why I'm not showing you the clear pyramids is they can be found easily, and I had them on last year's conference. The pyramids on US soil, not a word about them in the history books or in the books for the kids and the students in schools. However, we don't have one but 250 pyramids in Cahokia State Park in the US. When you go there, whatever you found there is wrong. They are telling you that these are mounds. Mounds are a pile of dirt. In this particular case, we have four different types of construction materials. In order to build this structure, which has a base 11% larger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. They were using sandstone blocks, pebbles, rocks, sand, and when they completed the pyramid, 
They cut the squares of grass and soil, turn them upside down and cover the pyramids. In order to build this structure, they needed an equivalent of 226,000 trucks with the materials. 20 ton trucks. And they built not one, but 250 of them. Five pyramid complexes, larger one on Italian soil, much, much before the ancient Roman times. This is one of them. Pyramids of Monte Vecchia. One, two, three. Of course, when you see the layout, we are aware that the same layout is on Giza Plateau with those three pyramids and in the city of Teotihuacan with the Sun, Moon and Quetzalcoatl pyramid. Just with the layout, we can see that uh, the communication between the continents existed thousands and thousands of years in the past. When you do more research, when you realize that all those pyramids have square base, have the same length of the base, have the number pi incorporated in them, then you finally can confirm that not only that the communication existed, but we can see the signature of the same architect. The Pyramid of the Moon, Mexico, Teotihuacan, 154 years ago, completely covered in soil and vegetation. Today, one of the best examples of pyramid architecture.